Good day all and welcome to Python Coding Lesson 11. In this lesson we'll be going through lists and we're going to go through the second part of lists. Quick recap of what we did last week. In last week's lesson we went through the first part of lists, how to create a list, how to use a list, and how to add items to a list. All right, so we've started off with a list is a variable that can hold multiple values because there's no use creating a single variable for a value when you want to do multiple values in one go. For example, the marks that we had in, or the numbers that we had in last week, where I wanted more than 10 numbers, there was no use creating number one, number two, number three, up till 10, when we can create a single va variable to hold all the items, right? We also learned that the list can hold multiple types of data in one go. So it doesn't only have to hold text, which is string or integers, floats or Boolean values. It can hold a multiple set of values. I also said we have different types of variable structures similar to this, which is called a tuplet set or dictionary. And the syntax for using a list is variable name, that's what your list name is going to be, is equal to square brackets and the items on the inside. The moment the computer or the program Python sees that you're using square brackets, it now arranges this variable as a list. All right, going on to today's work. We also we went also on to using the list. The index of the list starts at zero. So or always remember that the first position is actually position zero, one, two. And we also did the backwards. If you're going from backwards to forwards, you could start with minus one, minus one meaning the last position. So the index of a list has two structures. It has positive numbers starting from zero, one, two, and then it has negative numbers, negative one, negative two, negative three. So you can count backwards as well. So that helps us in order to know what the last item is instead of knowing how big the list is. Okay, next on to inserting. Now, last week we learned that we can add into a list by using the word append, append adds into a list. And when you append items to a list, it adds it to in the last position. But now what if we wanted to add information anywhere in the list? Like for instance, I want to add this person Kevin into the list at index one. Index one mean in between Sam and Dave. Now what we'd actually use is the list.insert. Now when we use list.insert, we always give it two items. We give it a position first and what the item we want to add to the list. So position means what's the index that we want to put it in? Is it index zero, one, two, right? And that's the position that we put it in. And when we put it in that position, everything else moves one to the right. So if I now look at this program that I have over here, I got my list is having Sam, Dave, and Frank, and then I'm printing my list. Of course, it'll be Sam, Dave, and Frank. But then the moment I say my list dot insert, I'm now inserting into this list that I've already have. And if you notice, I said, I'm gonna insert it at position one, and I'm gonna insert the word or the name Kevin into position one. So what Python will do, it'll go to position one, Position one is where Dave is. It's going to now insert a new point into that. So it's going to now read Sam. Then it won't have Dave there. It'll have Kevin now in position one. Then it'll have Dave and then it'll have Frank. So now I'll have four items into this list. So let's quickly do this in, oh, let me show you the list over there. All right, so I got Sam, Dave and Frank. I'm going to quickly save this as a new program. I don't wanna erase my old one. 
So I'm going to go insert right? And I'm going to just copy down what I had from my display that I had to you all there. So I'm going to go print my list, which would print the list that's there. And after that, I have my list is equal, sorry, my list dot insert round brackets. I'm going to insert it at position one and I'm going to insert the name Kevin. So now if I run this program, there we go. We've got Sam, Dave, and Frank. That was the first items that was there. And if you notice, Kevin now came into position one. So what happened when it inserted Kevin into position one, it moved all the other names one to the right. So Dave now went to position two, Frank went to the last position. And we have four items there, four names. So that's what the function insert does for us. It allows us to insert items into the list, but also we can put them in a particular position that we want them. So we don't have to put them in the end. Now this comes in handy if, uh, let's say I'm entering the names from a class sheet into the computer. And for some reason I forget somebody's name or I miss somebody's name and I skip it or somebody new comes into the class, I can enter them into the correct position. Because remember your class lists are normally in ascending order according to surname, right? So insert functions can help us there as well as many other ways, but this that's just one example. Then moving on to how do we remove, now we know that we can add an item, we can insert an item, how do we remove an item? Now there's two ways of removing items from a list. Now that means taking them out because if you notice when we said insert, it added on to the list, but it put it in a position. So it didn't remove the person Dave from there. So what if I wanted to remove a person's name from a list? How would I do that? Well, there's two ways we could do this. The first way is we can use the remove function and the remove function is as follows we has we have list what's the list we use in and then we say remove and when we say list remove in brackets we put down the item that we remove in right so this goes to the computer and tells them what item to remove now if you notice we use the remove item function to remove the first occurrence of that item First occurrence means the first time it comes across that item, it'll remove it. So if I look at this little sample here, I have my list is Sam, Dave, and Frank, and I have my list dot remove Dave. Now you notice I'm not using a position, I'm telling them what is the item to remove. And because I'm telling them what is the item they have to remove, you'll have to make sure that you understand Python is case sensitive again. So it will look for the exact spelling and exact case. So if we'll just type it out and run it in a proper program. Just going to edit with 3.9. File, save as, remove Dave. All right, so this time I'm going to say not insert. I'm going to go my list dot remove, and in brackets I can say Dave. Now this is what it's going to do. It's going to go to the list and it's going to search the entire list. Does that list have the word Dave or the name Dave in this case? And if it does have the word Dave, it's going to remove it from the list and it's going to remove the first occurrence. I'll come back to first occurrence just now for those of you that don't understand it. So I go print my list. And I go run it. 
there we go. I printed what's the entire list structure and the entire list structure because I removed Dave now only has Sam and Frank. Now coming back to what does the first occurrence mean? The first occurrence means it's going to remove it the first time it sees it. So that, that means if I had the name Dave again here, what's going to happen is if you notice we have one, two, three, four items. Just to make sure that you understand it's going to have four items, I'm going to print the list to show you that it has four items. All right? So it's going to print the list and it's going to have the four items. But the moment I say remove Dave, it's only going to remove the first time it sees Dave. So can you see Dave here? Yes. So it's going to remove that Dave. So if I remove that Dave, what's going to happen to the list? It's going to become one shorter. So I'll have Sam, Dave, Frank instead of double having Dave. So if I run this, there we go. Sam, Dave, Dave, Frank, that was the original list. Then in line three, I said, I'm going to remove Dave. So what the computer did, it went and looked into the list. Do I have Dave? The computer said yes to itself. And it said, all right, since I have Dave there, I'm going to remove it. And so now I have Sam, Dave, Frank, because it removed the first time it has Dave. Now, it doesn't only look at the first time, it looks anywhere in the list. So I don't only have to have Dave next to Frank on the left. I could have it in the back and it'll do the same thing. Again, it'll only remove the first time it sees it. So it'll remove Dave from the front. There we go. Now I have Sam, Dave, Frank, and Dave. But then when the end, when I remove Dave from the program, it says Sam, Frank, and Dave in the end. Again, it only removes the first time it sees the item that it wants to remove. After that, it doesn't look. Okay. So some of y'all might have this question, what if the item wasn't in the list at all? So what if I didn't have Dave in the list? Will the program break? And the answer to that is no, because it's going to look in the list and see that it doesn't have that. And what it's going to tell you is it cannot remove the list from X. Why? Because there it tells you X is not in the list. So the computer comes back to tell you, by the way, you can catch this error and make the computer work onwards. And we'll get to that in tomorrow's lesson. How do we bypass silly errors that the computer can just move on from? Because remember, if Dave's not there, it mustn't just stop, it must continue. So we will come to that tomorrow, right? So there we have it. It removes the first time it comes across it. I want to put Dave back there. And save. Right now, it doesn't only work with string, it can work with numbers and true and false as well. I just took string because it's easier to work with, right? So you can you put numbers in a list and remove a number from a list. Moving on. Right. Now I said there was two ways we could remove an item from a list. The first one you being list remove item. And the second way we can remove a item from a list is by using the list.pop function. And when we use the list.pop function, we have to give it an index. Again, we come across the word index. Index means we have to give it a position to remove. So we have to go to the computer and tell the computer, which position do I want to remove? Do I want to remove position zero? Do I want to remove position one? Do I want to remove position two? So what's the position I want to remove, right? So look at an example. I have my list has again, Sam, Dave, and Frank, and I'm gonna remove Dave again. And I know 
personally because I know what I put in there. So I'm going to remove position one. So it's been populated. So I'm going to remove the population. That's one. And what this will do, it'll give me the same display as one I had before. So if I quickly open up the remove function and save it as a new program, because I want y'all to have this. So we have remove Dave using pop. Right. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say, instead of remove, I'm gonna say pop. And instead of telling it what's the item name itself, I'm gonna give it a position. So if I put down position one, it's going to go to the list. It's gonna look at what's position one. Position one is Dave, remember again, we start our index, our positions at zero. So Sam is in zero, not one, right? So it's gonna to go to position one, it's gonna remove Dave. And there we go. Sam, Dave, Frank, Sam and Frank, it removed position one. Right, so again, you can put in any position here that you want that's existing in your list and run it and it'll remove that position now it removed frank i said position two just like i've now go out of bounds if i go out of the list items and i run the program you'll notice that it tells you that the pop index is out of range it's out of bounds it means you want to remove position three but i only have got position zero, one, and two, right? So again, the Python is going to try and tell you what your errors are, so you will need to read it. So when you come across the errors again, write it down and write down how you solved it. So it'll be easier to work in the future. All right, so I can't use that. So I can go back to position zero and now I'll remove Sam. There you go. So you can remove items using the pop function. Let's save it on one. All right. And then the last thing about the pop functions you should understand or you should know at this point is that the pop function also has a default value. That means what if you don't give it a number in brackets? Now, if you don't give it a number in brackets, it's automatically going to go and insert for itself an index of minus one. So if you remember, an index of minus one in a list means last position just like how minus two means second last and so on, you can go backwards. So it'll automatically, if you don't put down a number in the pop function, it's gonna go to index minus one as a default number and remove that last item. So I'm gonna quickly write that one there out for you. All right, so if I go and take out one from there and I run it, there we go. It now gave Sam, Dave, Frank, that was the original set. And because I did not put in a value in the pop function, it took a default value of minus one as a answer, remember? A function can have default values. We learned that in our previous work when we wrote functions. So that pop function has, if the person doesn't tell me what to remove, I'm gonna remove the last item. All right. Now let's try some coding exercises because we hardly did any in the last activity. Oh, before that, let's just do the one last function that you have to understand. Clear a list. We all know that if we have information in a list, we should also be able to clear it. And the clear function clears information from the list. And it's really straightforward and easy to understand. All you have to know in order to clear a list, 
we say list.clear. And when we say list.clear, any item that was in the list is now going to be removed. Quickly go to that one. And I have that one programmed already. The clear list. And there we have it. My list is Sam, Dave, Frank. If I say my list are clear, it's going to empty out that list. So if I quickly run this, there you go. It's telling you that we have nothing in the list. So the clear function removes any items that you have in a list. Now this will help us later on when we want to add information to a list, but remove and use the list for new pieces of information but don't want to create new variables because every time we create new variables, we are going to be taking up space in memory. So in order to go stop that, we use the same variables over and over. All right, now let's try an activity quick. A few bits of activities. Activity, let's go. Use a function or using functions Write a program that will find the sum of all the items in a given list. So we're going to be using lists. And the items I'm going to be using or the numbers that's going to be given to us in a list is entered by the user. Display the sum and the average of the list. So we're going to be using functions. Let's create a new Python file. Save as. Okay, I'm just going to save it as activity one. Sum. Average. Right, so we know that if we had to do this using a normal program, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write out the definition, or we're going to have our import statements. We'll have our functions. Then we'd have our main program. Now, in my main program, so I'm going to write a program that will find the sum of all the all the items in a given list. So uh, somebody's going to enter numbers in a list. So if I look at the question, it doesn't tell me how many numbers I'm going to use for this list. So I don't know how big this list is going to be. So I don't know how many numbers a person is going to enter. Now, if you don't know how many times you're going to repeat something, we use which loop in structure. Correct, if you said the while structure, because the for loop, we know how many items we're going to enter. So we're going to write a function quickly to for input. So we're going to say function, oh, sorry, def. And we're going to give it a name. I'm going to just call this input numbers. And this input numbers is going to be receiving the list. So I'm going to go with list numbers. And when it receives a list, it's going to enter in the numbers for me. Now, again, we don't know how many numbers we're going to enter. So we're going to have to be using a looping structure. And the looping structure for we use is the while loop. So before we can actually start using the while loop, we need to at least get the first number. So I say while number not equal to minus 99. I'm saying minus 99 as my stop function, just like how we had for our previous programs. Right, so I'm going to do some work. So before that, obviously put down print. Enter in 
minus 99 to stop. Next, oh, it's not indented, so it's going to be out of the program. So I'm going to make sure it's inside. Right. Once they, I got the message, I can then ask them for the number. So I can go number is equal to int input. Enter in a number. Now, if I wanted, I could be fancy or user friendly and tell them which number I'm working with currently by creating a variable to keep track of that number. But for the time being, I'm just going to ask them to enter in a number. And I'm going to just run this program to see if it works, and you'll see that nothing happens. Oh, sorry, end of line. there. Uh, pass. Oh, some of you may have been shouting, right? There we go. I forgot to end the string. Right, nothing actually happens because I didn't actually put call up the definition. So we've got that part. We got the number. Now I said, all right, if the number is less than equal or not equal to minus 99, I need to do this work. So what's the work I need to do? The first thing I need to do is add the number to the list. Now, if I'm going to add this number to the list, that means I'm putting information to the list. What function do we use? Yes, append. So I'm going to append and I'm going to append it to number. Now, because this is going to be used for input and I'm going to keep on adding to the list, I must make sure that that list at the start is empty. So how do I make sure that the sorry, how do I make sure that the list is empty? Yes. I say list number dot clear to make sure that it's empty at the start so that there's no numbers in the list. Remember this clears out the list itself. Now that I've got a number in the list, what do I do? Yes, I need to remember we have for the while loop, we have an initialize, test, and change. We initialize by getting the number. We tested, is that number not minus 99? If it's not nine, minus 99, then I come inside the loop instruction. And now that it's inside the loop instruction, I need to change this number every single time until it reaches minus 99. So I need to have the input statement here as well. So we have the input statement there as well. So now it'll come at the line number 11 and it'll ask you to enter in a number. At line 11, when you enter another number, it'll come go back to the top of the while loop and it'll check, is this new number that you entered in line 11 not equal to minus 99? If the answer is yes, it'll go inside the loop. If it, the answer is no, it'll go outside the loop. Now that I've got the number again, I can then end off that program. So I can go, okay, let's call up the definition input numbers. And when we call up input numbers, I need to make sure that I send it information because if I run it at this point, it'll give me one parameter missing. There you go. Type in type error. Input numbers is missing one required positional argument. It's missing the argument. So we have to send it the argument. What's the argument? We need to send it list of numbers. So I'm going to just create list of numbers outside. And yes, you may say, I could have just created it as global, and I could. But again, in global variables, we have less control, right? So I'm going to say list of numbers, and I can put list of numbers in there. It says enter in a number, minus 99, or enter in 99 to stop. Enter in a number, so if I go three, four, zero, minus 
122, it still runs. The only time it'll stop is when I put minus 99. At this point, all the information is in that list, but we haven't done any work with it yet. So we've got the input part of it done. We've got all the numbers. So now we now need to create a function. I'm just gonna write here. Function to enter in numbers. will run until minus 99 is given. All right, so now I can create a, defi a, defi a definition function for the next part, which was to display or find the sum average and display it. So I'm gonna go definition, display it's going to receive the list so i'm going to go i'm going to receive list of numbers and when you receive list of numbers you're going to be working with it so what are you be what will you be doing you'll be working out the sum and average and we know we want the sum of all the numbers. But the question again is, do you know how big the list or how many numbers in the list? No, we don't know how many numbers in the list. So we can use the while loop, yes. But the thing is, we've already entered in all the numbers into this list. So the, there's a second part to that question now. We don't know how many numbers in the list, but can we find out? Yes. How do we find out how many numbers in a list? We can use the length function. Yes. So I can go length list of numbers. And I can say, how long is this list? Just going to print it to show you that it'll show you actually the length. Oh, I need to call it up after. So I'm going to go display. Let's send it list of numbers. Twelve to four. We've got three numbers, and if I go minus ninety nine, it tells me we have got three numbers. Can you see that? So remember again, we learned the length function before. And we learned it on Friday as well. Length print tells you how long something is. And it tells you how many characters there is actually when you use it in string. So when we use it in lists, it tells you how many items in the list. When you use it with string and text, it tells you how many characters. So now we know how long the length of the list is. So we can actually run a for loop. We can run a for loop and say, all right, for count in range. And we can put down long there. And all this is going to do, it's going to say, if long is three, it's going to put down three. So it'll go zero, one, two. And that's what we should be counting. We start counting at zero. If it, we put in 20 numbers, it'll say, range 20 and because range 20 will be zero to 19 because we'll have for each item. I can then go and say, find the sum of the numbers. In order to find the sum of the numbers, we're gonna say sum of numbers is equal to Right, so that'll be sum of numbers equal to the sorry plus equal to the number. So it'll be list of numbers.
Sorry, I keep getting cut off. All right, so that'll be sum of numbers plus equal to list of numbers. And we look at the position and what's the number that's counting from zero to how long it is. It's the variable count. So I put down count in brackets. So that'll go zero, one, two, right up to how many numbers in the list. So now we've got the sum of the items and I need to actually indent this word because otherwise it'll be just be in the definition. I don't want it just in the definition. It's a particular position. It needs to go for the for loop, right? Now that I've got the sum, I can calculate average. But before I can calculate average, there's one thing we need to make sure that we do. And that is initialize the sum variable. That means start it off at a particular position. And the reason we do that is because sometimes when variables created, they automatically get numbers placed in them. So that's the reason why we initialize it. And Python may give us an error that variable not initialized, but used, right? So at the top here, before the loop instruction, we just say equal to zero. We initialize it, start it off at zero, because I don't know what numbers are in there currently. Just like when I started the list off with clearing it because I don't know if there's currently items in that list, even though I created it as a blank, all right. So next, I can calculate the average and I can go average is equal to the sum of the numbers divided by how many numbers in this list? It comes down to again, do we know how many numbers in this list? And the answer is yes. We calculated the in long. So I divided by how long the list is. Because remember, if I have three numbers, long is holding the length of it, which is three. If I had 20, it was holding 20. So I take sum of numbers divided by how long that list is. So this changes from the previous sum and average program that we did last week, which was a 10 number system, which we used a particular set of numbers. So now this program would work for any number of numbers. The final step is to display the answer. So I go print and I can print the sum is, and I can go sum of numbers. And then finally, I can print the average is average. All right, so now if I run this program, enter a number, so I go six, seven, eight, nine, and I say, all right, that's the last number that I want to use. So I go minus 99. So I got four numbers here. The sum is 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 is 30, and the average is 7.5 because it's 30 divided by 4. All right? That becomes a program, except for now I don't have to show you how long it is. I just have that there. Start to show you that it works. I'm just going to quote it out. Now remember, anything in red. Python won't actually read it. It'll be like invisible writing to Python. But everything else, Python will read. That's why it didn't give me any errors on what this function is, what is going to be here, and function hash sign, even though I had import there. Right? So that's the first one. Display the sum and average of the list. We did that. We entered all the numbers. Next. Write a program to display the sum, difference, product, and quotient of a given 
list entered by the user. So it's the exact same thing again, but the difference is now we're going to do multiple functions. We're going to do a function for sum. We're going to do a function for difference, product, and quotient. And we're still going to be given the list, so we'll be still using this input numbers. And if you remember from our previous work, I can reference this program using my import statement because we already did that part. Now, I'm gonna leave that part of the question to you to do. I'm gonna go on to the next part, all right? Which is, now remember, you're going to be trying out this one. It's gonna be similar to this program, which is the sum and average, but you're not gonna do average, you're gonna do difference, product, and quotient. Difference means subtraction, product means multiplication, and quotient meaning division. Okay, so the next one. Write a program to find and display the largest number in a given list. So we're gonna write a program to display the largest number in a given list. For example, if I tell you the numbers are four, five, three, two, and 11. You'll tell me that the largest number is 11. But now we'll need to program this in Python. So Python will have to now work out what is the largest number. And you'll have to teach Python how to work it out. It's not that you see it because it's bigger, it has to be the biggest. It's something that you have done. What have you done in order to check that 11 is the biggest number? You learned that you would have checked each number against each other. And you would have said, is four greater than five? Let's say I have this variable called max. Trying to write in, yeah, right. Let's say I had a variable called max. And I take four and I save it there the first time because it's in the first position, position zero. This is position one, position two, position three, and position four. You would have said, is four greater than five? You would have said, no. Therefore, five must be bigger. You would have erased the four. You said, no, it's not four. It's actually five. Then you would have put five there. Then you would have said, all right, is this five greater than this three? Is this five greater than this three? You would say no. So it's five, oh, sorry, five is, sorry, you would have said yes. Five is greater than three. And you would have left five there. Then you would have said, is five greater than this two in position three? You would have said, Yes, so you would leave five there because it is bigger. Then you would have said, all right, is five greater than this 11? You'd have said, no, five is smaller than the 11. So you'd take out five from being the maximum number and you'd say 11 is the maximum number. So this is what we have to program in Python. We have to program in Python some code to check one variable against this list that we've got. And if you notice, this list has been checked how many times? One, two, three, four times. Why four times? Because the first time we just went and put the first or the zero position in max. There's no need to check whether max is greater than the zero position if we put the number there first time. I hope you understood that. All right. Now let's try programming that. I'm going to open up program, so file new. And I'm going to quickly copy out the code from our previous program, which we've got the numbers. So the definition part. File save. Max number. All right, so I'm going to 
but in the definition part, I'm going to go to the main part of the program. I'm going to call up the input numbers. I'm going to send it list. I'm just going to go short from L numbers, list of numbers. I'm going to make sure that I have L of numbers created for me. L numbers. Just for that, y'all don't confuse it. I'm going to put here L numbers is list of numbers. All right, so you know what L numbers variable is actually. Now, once I've got this, I can create a program or a definition of function to check it. So I'm going to say def find max. Look at list numbers. Once I got my list of numbers, I'm now going to create a maximum variable to store it. Okay, so I'm going to go max val u, and the maximum value is going to, I'm just going to shorten this as well. Oh, never mind. Copy it. Position zero, I'm going to take out. So I'm going to put the first value as the maximum value. I know that it might not be true, but just for the time being. All right. Just like what I did here. I said I'm going to store the maximum value in max. So then I have one less check. All right. So that's what I did. Maximum value is now storing the position zero from the list. Next, I need to find how long this list is. So I'm going to go long is equal to the length of the list. Why? Because I'm going to run a loop instruction to check it. Because I'm I don't know how many items. This was only for four, or sorry, five items. What if this, What if I had 20 numbers there? I need a program to work for all the 20 numbers. So we're using a for loop to do this, because remember this is just gonna go zero, one, two, three, four. It's gonna check that number with position zero, that number, sorry, not with position zero, this number with position one, this number with position two, position three, position four. So we're gonna go, you run a for loop. So we're gonna go four, count in range long. And once we're in the for loop, we can now check if the maximum value is less than I know I'm looking for the maximum value and I should say greater than, but put it this way. When should we replace this value? We should replace this value when we find that this number is bigger than our maximum value. So when our maximum value is less than our bigger number, that's when we replace in it. Remember the if statement only works when it's true. So when my maximum value is less than the list of numbers at position range, oh, sorry, position count, that means if this maximum value is less than this number, then this number is bigger. So I need to put this number in max, all right? 
So that's what we did. If four is four less than five, yes, four is less than five. Therefore, five needs to go into max. So you must put your if statements to become true. So that's what we did. Is the maximum value less than the number in list? If it's true, then the maximum value should actually be the list of the number count. And at this point, you'll notice that long is holding how big the list is. And we run in from range to long. So it goes zero, one, two, three, and onwards. But we already said we don't need to check the zero position. So we're not going to start from zero. We're going to start from one. Once we do this, we can run out our program. So I can go print. the maximum number is. And now I can say max value. So let's try this. Oh, all numbers. equal to, it has to be a list. Input L numbers is not defined input number. Oh, I changed the entire thing. Okay, I'm just gonna put it back to normal. List numbers. Again, input number. Okay, I'm seeing an error that can't actually see where it is. Input number, list number, sending through list number there. Name, input number is not defined. Did I call? Oh, there we go. I uh, remember. <laughs> Spelling, so input numbers. All right, so that was my mistake there. List numbers not defined, capital N. All right, so we got 12. Right, so we got 12, 3, 4, 5, minus 99, and nothing will happen. Oh, it broke. Okay, don't worry about that. It's just the literal part there. Right, so it didn't do the actual program because I didn't call the function. Literal part was I put 5 minus 99. I didn't give an actual integer. That was that error there, so don't worry about that part. Right, so I'm going to go find max and I'm going to send max list of numbers. So I go, the numbers were four, five, three, two, and 11 for minus 99. Find max is not defined. I spelt it wrong again. It's M-A-X, and I put it as wrong spelling. All right. Again, case sensitivity. Four, five, three, two, eleven, minus 99. The maximum number is 11. So this would work for any single program. So if I run it again, I can go 12, 23, 
just put in some random numbers. We can all see that 246 is the bigger one, minus 99. 246 is the biggest number. So now we got a program to find what the largest number in a program is. Now again, all the errors that I had there was basically the spelling errors and not properly put in the, again, spelling of the variables down properly. Even though that they were same spelling, the case was wrong. All right, so after that, you've got write a program to find and display the smallest of the numbers. So you'll notice that this was the maximum of the numbers given. You have to do the smallest one. Again, the program's the same with only one change if you notice from here to here. This was max or the largest. This is gonna be the smallest. So there's gonna be one main change in these two programs. Let's see if you can figure what those changes are going to be. All right, there are many more activities in the slide. So if you go onto the next page, you've got write a program that allows you to enter 10 marks into it. And you've got 10 marks and 10 names. This time we're dealing with two lists. And with the two lists, we're gonna enter the average and display the person that got it. Again, when you are writing out the programs, you must first make sure that you write out what you want to do. Now, yes, we've got it as, a, I got it as point A, B, and C, but point A, display the names and the marks. What is it you're gonna be doing? If it's gonna be 10 names and marks, and you're gonna enter those 10 names and marks, you're first gonna have an input for it. Then this would be your display. But before you can get to your display, you need to process your display. So how are you going to be displaying it? So it's gonna be 10, you're gonna run a for loop. So you need to write down, you're gonna run a for loop for this. And what will the for loop be running from? The for loop will be running from position zero to 10. Why zero to 10? Because we, our list always starts off at zero. And if you say zero to 10, 10 won't be included. Remember the upper numbers normally excluded in the range function. All right. That's it for today's lesson. I will see you tomorrow, same time. Do I have any questions before I end off? Right, so if there's no questions, thank you so much for attending. I will see you all tomorrow.